It's 10 o'clock. It's a mountain time. It's time for Tom and Shane. It's Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. Shane, wow. Where's the, <laughs> it's already March. Where's the year going? <laughs> I know. We're almost through a quarter, a quarter of this year. Wow. I know. Crazy. It's pretty exciting. Tom Eaglehoff, your morning, uh, Saturday morning mayor, AM 1450 KMMS in Bozeman, Montana. Shane Matobin, half man, half amazing in the dark in Vancouver, British Columbia. You need more light, son. <laughs> you need some light on you. Yeah, put a turn of light on there. There you go. Now we can see you. <laughs> you were just kind of an outline there <laughs> before. Hey, we want to welcome you uh, to our podcast today. And today, of course, our topic is resumes. Uh, we want to talk about resumes, why you won't get a job interview. And before we get to that, of course, we need to tell you that you need to subscribe uh, to us on YouTube if you're watching there and click the notification bell so you never miss another podcast and like us and leave a comment because uh, uh, page. Uh, YouTube likes that kind of stuff. So does Facebook, for that matter. And we're Facebook Live as well. And, of course, we're on Patreon. Uh, if you're not sure what Patreon is, there'll be a description in the uh, uh, below that will tell you all about that. And if you'd like to support the show, we would appreciate it very much if you would do that. And we've got several business perks that you will like that will help your small business if you actually uh, do that so uh, we're excited to uh, for you to do that we're here every tuesday and thursday and we'll take on a business topic to help your small business your home-based business your startup business or whatever and go to tomandshane.com for more tips and things that we do and uh, our uh, business and political show is on Saturdays, 8 to 11, Mountain Time. Uh, go to KMMSAM.com and uh, click Listen Now. You don't have to sign up for anything. You don't have to do anything at all. And our past shows are all also, also at KMMSAM.com. We record all of these so you can watch them at your leisure. So uh, there we go, Shane. Indeed. Here we go. Yeah. Well, we want to talk about resumes today. And this is this is both for the person looking for a job and for the uh, the person doing the hiring, because both are important in here and as to how to read a resume, what should be on it, what shouldn't be on it and all of that. Uh, I was a personnel manager for a 10 store chain in San Diego. So I've done a lot of hiring. I looked at a ton of resumes and I uh, have interviewed tons of people. Uh, because it was a retail operation, so uh, we did have a, a turnover in 10 stores, obviously. But uh, your uh, the employer only has about six seconds, six seconds to look at your resume. And uh, also, uh, we did a, pos a, pa a past podcast on interview questions you can't ask in an um, interview, and I'll post the uh, link to that in the description uh, below. But uh, to get started, Shane, oh, my gosh, what's a resume? <laughs> what exactly. is a resume? Permission, permission to use an analogy. Yeah. So when you sit down to put a photo album together, you go through your photos and you pick out your best pictures that you want to represent yourself in a timely way in a photo album. And a resume is a word album. It's a word album that you use to express in the best way through a timeline of how you've done so far in your life. So you want to look at this in a very positive way. Also, uh, in uh, larger corporations, human resources, they actually have uh, their own uh, resume forms that they want you to fill out, mostly because um, a lot of the jobs there in, in uh, large corporations are looking for people with specific technical experience, particularly the government. You have to have certain degrees, certain work experience that, um, you know, already a predicate before you fill out the balance of the resume. A resume isn't personal, it's professional. So this is why Tom wanted to talk about it today because the importance of, of it is examining your professional life. That's for sure. It's uh, the, the most important thing uh, to remember uh, of, about a resume uh, when you're when you're uh, filling this thing out. Uh, this is an advertisement for you. Um, I'm not sure why people are embarrassed by their success, Shane. That's always 
that's always bothered me, you know, that if mm -hmm. you're successful, uh, somehow you have to apologize for it. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't have to apologize for it. You should be shouting it to the rooftops. So that's what your resume is going to do. It's going to shout who you are from the rooftops. And uh, that's the, um, that's the most important part of, of a resume is it just, as Shane says, it's the best word picture to describe you that you can possibly come up with. Piece of cake. Precisely. Exactly. <laughs> and you're, you're absolutely right. It is an advertisement and yeah. um, it's a wonderful thing to be able to explore and, and provide uh, uh, information. A lot of resumes uh, or, you know, when they, when you look up a resume and, and how to fill out one, um, most people go back 10 years, but if, you know, if you've had a successful life and uh, say you're in your forties and you need to go back and talk about what you did do in, in your twenties, you should include that. It, it's just as important now to tell them what you did then, because you learn everything you do teaches you something and how not to make a mistake. So it's important that the employer knows that you're capable of not making mistakes. Well, that's certainly true. Uh, your resume is should be limited to one page unless Correct. you have you have specific skills and everything. So, or exhibit, the next or exhibit a document. I yeah. mean, like cop well, diploma. Yeah, but well, let's let's keep in mind the the whole purpose of the resume is not to get the job; it's to get the interview. <laughs> That's, That's it. Exactly you you're right. going to be you're going to be uh, in a stack of resumes on a employer's desk or a, a personnel manager's desk or whatever. And something on that something you write down is going to have to stand out to that employer in order for you That's to be right. hired or in order for, to you, for you to get the interview. Yeah. That's right. And and one of the things that stands out uh, of course is that it, it if on your resume you show uh, 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 an ability to move from one business to another, not having left the same type of job, you know, over a period of time, that's not a that's not a strength that you've left the you know the same type of job over time because they look at it and go, hmm, he moves around a lot. <laughs> well, uh, I've worked for uh, uh, twenty five different companies in twenty eight industries. So there you go. over my 50 years, I've, uh, I think the longest I held a job was eight years. Everything else was two years or less. Well, so, all right. So there yeah, you I've, are. <laughs> I've read myself five different times in five different yeah. uh, industries and found yeah. it uh, exhilarating because, you know, I was always learning new and uh, accelerating through a process that I, I understood from the previous success I'd had at other jobs. So I utilized the, the, the success that I'd had to be able to develop uh, an interest in new, new areas and uh, accelerate in that area as uh, quickly as I could, because there's not a lot in this life, you know, live in the moment, move ahead, get it done. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. It, a lot of experience in a lot of different um, uh, industries is what made me attractive to other businesses. In many cases, I was recruited. And the other thing, as a business owner, um, when I, I always carried an employment app with me wherever I went. And if I went to a store and I found a good employee who took good care of me and good customer service, good personality, intelligent, whatever, all the, the things that would translate from the job they were doing to my uh, business, uh, I, would, I would hand them the resume and I would say, you know, I'm very impressed with you. If, uh, you know, if you are unhappy here, uh, let's talk. And uh, I would give them the resume. And sometimes that would work. Sometimes it wouldn't. But, you know, but occasionally you're going to find somebody that is very, very good at their job. But they just don't like where they're working. I just that, aren't, yeah, I had aren't. great success. In, yeah, I had great success in enjoying eating at other places to uh, look for good people that mm -hmm. knew how to uh, to serve and and had personality and were able to you know uh, move through the process of of being in the business I was in. So 
it always works. Tom, that's a great suggestion that Tom's made. It, you, you, there's nothing wrong with going out there and digging for that diamond in the rough. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, next we want to talk about information that you should put together before you begin. And there's a, there's a whole list of things. Uh, um, one of the things that's really important is that you need to be able to create multiple resumes for multiple jobs. So uh, there isn't a cookie cutter situation out there. If you're, if you are applying for a job to a company, then your resume should fit that company uh, because everybody and, else and, and is of gonna, the job. Yeah. That's yeah, right. and the job. You know, of you, course. You, well, that's yeah. right. You, you want to research a company that's looking for mm -hmm. someone. You want to research the type of job they're talking about. Be, be able to be a specific to answer to what it is that they're looking for. And if that means that you adjust what you do on a resume, as Tom says, you don't use the same resume all the time. You adjust it for the job you're applying for. So whatever technology or, or technical skills that you have, physical skills that you have, you know, you can adjust them to any resume or that, you know, for a specific job at a specific company. It, it right. shouldn't always read the same. It should be like Tom has mentioned to you. They only have like six seconds. And in the, in the 21st century, there's so many companies now offering uh, for uh, managers to look online to mm -hmm. at resume. And so we'll get to that. Said, yeah, one page is all you need. Yeah, yeah we'll get to the online uh, portion uh, later on. But uh, but we want to. Uh, uh, the more informed you are about the company going in, um, that another thing that people ask, often ask in interviews, and I always did. Uh, do you have any questions for me? And this would be the time for you to show your knowledge of the business. That you might say, um, I noticed online you uh, you carry X amount of products. Uh, do you have uh, new products uh, coming down the line or anything like that? But it it shows the um, it shows the potential employer that you've researched the company and you know something about it. Uh, also, research the people who are in it and look for articles, magazines, uh, anything that's written about them uh, that you can compliment them on. If they're the one interviewing you. Yeah. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of, a uh, lot of things in there. The probably one of the most important things, I absolutely have your have it proofread. Now <laughs> I will true. tell you <laughs> as a writer, I can read what I've written 84 times and I'll hand it to someone else and they'll say, Hey, you misspelled Anne. <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't know why that is, but we, we gloss over our own mistakes, our grammar, grammar counts, spelling counts. Absolutely. Uh, you've got to have, uh, you've got to have all of those things uh, in there. So, um, but yeah, the biggest point, uh, make sure that the resume fits the, fits the uh, job that you're, uh, that you're going, uh, going for. So. That's right. You know, you know book companies have editors for a reason. You That's know, they for sure. Adjust, they <laughs> check for spelling and punctuation. And so mm -hmm. it's a good thing for you to find a wordsmith that, you know, uh, somebody that has, you know, some background in li in maybe literature even. And they're a good person to review and suggest gra grammatical changes or, you know, word mm -hmm. changes. It, they, they, mm -hmm. There's uh, it's a good thing. It's it's not a complicated thing to do because we're talking about one page. So that's it, true. It's, yeah. it's, make sure it's all right. Well, don't don't rely on spell check in Microsoft Word or whatever <laughs> whatever processor you're using because uh, you know they're <laughs> they don't catch it all. So gotcha. uh, yeah, I have a couple people looking over uh, who are <laughs> you know uh, articulate and know uh, language. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, I, in English language, I've always had a problem with my eyes and e's. Is it spelled yeah. e? Or I -E? Yeah, yeah. You you got to be very careful. That's, uh, yeah, absolutely very important, yeah. Next, we want to talk about the heading, uh, because this is where your name, uh, your address, uh, your email, phone number, uh, if you happen to have a website for some reason, or a blog, or anything that uh, is pertinent to the job, or that will uh, show your expertise in some way, uh, you need to put that up there. Uh, this is going to be probably 16 point type, 14 to 16. It's going to be a little bigger than the um, 
uh, typeset on your uh, the rest of your page. So, um, you know, keep that in mind that uh, make sure you have all the contact information. If you've got more than one phone, um, you know, put whatever phone numbers you have. Uh, you may have a cell phone. You may have a home phone that's, um, you know, so you don't want to miss that callback for an interview. So make sure that um, your um, heading has everything that's uh, that's needed there. And remind and remind yourself too that you want to have a professional uh, response to, when people uh, wait to leave a message. You know, it's you sit down and, and uh, write out a four or five word, uh, you know, comment or you know, people, you know, saying to someone, um, "I'm not available at the moment. Please call me back." Or I do wish to speak with you. Please take the time to call me back. Or if you if you would please leave your name and number or something that's professional and that they first hear when because that'll be the first time perhaps they've heard your voice. That's true. That's an excellent point. Uh, yeah, if you're if your answering machine is um, you know uh, I'm I'm at supper now. Leave your number and I'll call you back at supper. Yeah, that's uh, it's true. not a professional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not a professional answering answering machine. So uh, if you are looking for a job, whatever you've got on your phone that was cutesy or whatever, get rid of it. That's and, right. and, uh, you, don't, and yeah. you don't need to new, use your name because that two things, it takes up yeah. space and they, they know who they're calling. <laughs> so, well, that's true. But as yeah, I said, but this it, it, they may yeah. have heard your voice. So make it sound professional and, 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 and something of uh, uh, an expected mm -hmm. response that uh, thank yeah. you for calling. Please leave uh, your name and number and I will get right back to you or something. Just, it's just to sound professional. Yeah, it really does. And it, it'll make all the difference because that's one of the things that we're going to talk about is the things that you don't think about that's going to affect you uh, getting a job as you're, as we go through uh, this uh, podcast. Uh, next thing we need to know is uh, what should and should not be on a resume. Because as we mentioned before, you're limited to one page mostly. If you've got extensive work experience in the um, field they're looking for, then you might have more than one page uh, for your, uh, you know, your experiences or skills or things like that. Otherwise, um, the person is not going to spend a lot of time. They're going to, as I say, they got about six seconds to look at it. They're going to look at who you are. And, um, you know, what you have on your resume and they're going to decide then and there, do the, does this person warrant a call or not? Absolutely. And the, the issue of, of, uh, this is again, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a word, uh, picture of you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. object, uh, objectives, um, aren't as important as, uh, the things that you, are capable of getting done or problems that you can solve to particularly if it's something in in technology you know if it's uh, something that you do like um, if you're coding or, or you're writing and it's a new company and and uh, so you make clearly uh, what type of coding and what type of work you can do uh, you know what operating systems you can work in and and that's probably going to be the most important key line in your resume, uh, depending on what you're applying for, because the, uh, if it's a technical job, if, if it's something more of a trades job, of course, you know, you want to be able to express what you're capable of doing, whether it's carpentry and basic plumbing, you could say, or basic uh, uh, wiring or electrical. You know, these are the type of specifics that solve problems for people that that's why, you know, that's what they're looking for. People that'll solve problems in the need of the person they want to hire. Absolutely. All right. Uh, you don't need an objective. It takes up space. We all know what your objective is. Your objective is you're going to trade your labor for money to make your hopes and dreams come true. That's, that's the objective. No other that's reason. Right. You know? That's right. uh, we Start, work, starting the line up with, I need this job, not a good idea. Not a good idea. And we all know that, uh, you know, find a challenging position in a company I can grow with. BS. <laughs> Leave it off. Yes. It's not necessary. Yes. We all know, you know, the guy knows why you're there, the guy or the girl, whoever's hired you. Uh, either one know why you're there. 
you know, they're, you're mm. there to trade your labor for, for dollars uh, to make your hopes and dreams come true. So that's the only objective that uh, that's a given. So it doesn't need to be on the resume and it takes up extra space that you can use to advertise yourself in a more positive light. So, so uh, yeah, an objective, uh, I've, I've, I've never paid much attention to um, what the objective is. <laughs> and there's a difference between informing and bragging. So there you go. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. The first thing you should have on your resume is your work experience, because that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm interested in is what work experience do you have in your past that will help uh, you acclimate yourself to this job more quickly? The less training I have to do, the less uh, you know time I have to put in with you, the better it is. So. Um, and, um, the other thing that I recommend is that you don't put your work experience necessarily in chronological order, put it in order of importance. As Shane, as Shane said, if you had a job 20 years ago, that really demonstrates the expertise of this business, then put it up there and put the dates you, you were there at the very end of, of that sentence. The other thing about your work experience that's very critical is, um, uh, you know, uh, work for two years uh, leading a group of people. Um, that doesn't tell me anything. Uh, leading a group of people that increase sales 20% uh, year over year tells me something. That tells me something that you're able to lead people and increase business. So those are the kinds of writing that you need to add to your work experience. There has to be a benefit in every work experience to the person reading the resume. That's why I've always had two web I mean, our email addresses. One was personal and the other was business. And I always had a specific business email to give to people for this purpose, because, you know, when you put an email, when you put a, a, a email together, it, it outlines, uh, you know, what your, your background is. Same with Facebook. You should have a Facebook professional page and a safe book personal page because you can have all that work experience and, and information about the things that you look in and uh, pay attention to in the industry you work in because they're going to go look for it. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, next, we need to be careful of the skills that we put down uh, because this again gets back to making uh, an each individual resume for the job that's happening. Uh, if, uh, you know, if, if you've done carpentry work, as Shane pointed out, but you're going to, uh, uh, work in a kitchen, the fact that you're an expert framer, isn't going to help that kitchen very much. Now, the fact that you're good at your job might be an indication, but, um, make sure, uh, and this again is why you research the company. What skills do you have? Uh, can you match up with what that, uh, employer is looking for? And the other important aspect of this, particularly in trades, is are you licensed? Do you, you know, do you have the board? And, yep. uh, you know, it's, it's important that uh, if you're just uh, starting out and not have that, uh, you have to tell them that. But if, you, mm -hmm. if you're experienced, and you, you know, you are a skilled plumber, welder, uh, electrician, then you want to put that information in. It's critical. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, just like in your work experience, if you're applying for an accountant job, uh, for example, which is very specific, uh, you know, in your work experience, you might put something like uh, 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 saved clients half a million dollars uh, in taxes uh, my first year or something like that. You know, if you mm -hmm. are doing a tax accounting or something along along that line. So. Uh, next, we want to talk about uh, education, and uh, this one usually goes to last. Um, usually, when don't be put off when a job uh, app uh, or a job advertisement says uh, degree required, uh, unless it's a job for uh, accounting or something professional. Um, in many cases you you have an education in experience 
that you can't get in school in a classroom for certain for certain things you know they they can't teach you a personality in school they can't teach a good work ethic in school um <laughs> you know so don't be put off by usually a degree required is one way that uh, employers use to reduce the number of resumes. So they don't have as many to look at. Right. Particularly if yeah. they're looking for a specific professional, you know, yeah. there's different yeah. types if you're looking of law. To re you know, uh, yeah. If it's a retail job or a management job, um, that's don't be put off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't but be if, put if off. You're, right. if, you're, if you're in the professional field and, you have a specific specific experience in a certain field of law or accounting or engineering, oh, yeah. you, mm -hmm. then you want to qualify that so that, 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 you know, it's clear to them that you you're qualified for the job. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're, if, uh, you know, if a degree, um, if the educator or if the job itself, like an accountant or something like that, if they're looking for a CPA, uh, if you're not a CPA, they're probably not going to look at you. So that's, that's, uh, you don't apply for that job, but That's there right. are, uh, there are certain jobs in management or whatever, where they may ask for a college degree, but you can certainly get by without one. If your work experience, your skills and, um, you know, other things, uh, demonstrate you as a serious, uh, candidate. So. That's great. I mean, wanting a job as an accountant for a major firm is a lot different than get looking for a job as a bookkeeper for a new company. That's you know, a new exactly camp right. company can't afford a hundred thousand dollar a year, you know, accountant, mm -hmm. uh, but they can afford thirty five thousand dollar a year uh, bookkeeper. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. So, uh, if you did, if you do have a degree and things like that, one of the things also to consider extracurricular activities and leadership that you had in um, uh, in uh, school, uh, class president or head of the chess team or something like that, you know, right. whatever. Uh, actually, uh, uh, Chab, uh, 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 president of the chess team tells me you're a thinker, uh, you're a planner, you uh, can overcome adversity, uh, all of those things. So, you know, don't put it, you know, if something shows expertise in thinking uh, that you did as an ex extracurricular activity or led people in, in thinking um, uh, activities, then by all means, uh, yeah, put that, put that in there. That's right. And, and if you've gone to, uh, uh, to, uh, see Tom at one of his presentations, you know, you'd want to put that in there so they know that you've gone out and, and, uh, and work to develop skills that you may not have had. And uh, there are a lot, there are so many people uh, like Tom, helping people out and, and training them. Um, this, this is a good point to put in that, that you show that you have that interest. Uh, people sometimes think it's important to put their sports or interest in sports and, and leisure time in there. You don't want to. They're not interested in what you do on your own time. No. They're only interested <laughs> in what you're going to do for them. So leave that <laughs> out. Pretty, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, the other thing too, if you've uh, received any honors or awards, if you've been certified as, uh, as something, uh, and it pertains to the job, absolutely. That should be included in there. Um, if you've been honored for, uh, something that, um, uh, shows your character, the kind of character you have, you were honored by a business association or something, or, um, you know, you, uh, won some kind of award uh, for customer service or something like that. Uh, absolutely. Those things uh, need to be included uh, in your resume for sure. That's right. Uh, being recognized by your peers in the field of work that you do is a, cl a clear honor and uh, they don't hand them out easily. So mm -hmm. you should make certain they're in here because it is, that's a big plus. Um, it, you know, it shows your uh, grit, and your ability to uh, create uh, solutions, because what we mm -hmm. have talk about this all the time. The biggest uh, situation running a company every day is solving problems. Right. That's for sure. 
All right. Why won't you get the job? Well, one popular reason you won't get the interview is because they're going to go look at your Facebook page or your Twitter page or your LinkedIn page or your uh, Snapchat page, TikTok, Spotify, uh, Instagram, whatever. Um, before you even think about sending out resumes, you need to go through all of these and delete anything that could possibly be construed as racist or uh, politically incorrect or political or whatever. Uh, get rid of it. Uh, you know, your, your Facebook should just be recipes and uh, puppy dog uh, pictures. <laughs> <laughs> or are you doing something exceptional? <laughs> and, yeah. The cancel generation is here. And we know from everything we've seen on television, uh, that's where people have found uh, their shortcomings, so to speak, has been their Twitter page or their Facebook page. So uh, uh, even LinkedIn. And mm -hmm. as Tom says, yeah. TikTok. So uh, if you're a narcissist and you do a lot of TikTok, Talk, you know that that's not a good thing yeah well also too um you know the the biggest thing they're going to get an uh a, a, a snapshot of your personality the kind of person you are based on the on the types of things that you post uh that's going to be the that's going to be the uh the critical uh, thing that they're going to look for and uh some kind of a thread of oh this uh, this guy drinks a lot uh, there's a bunch of bar pictures. Uh, you know, he's got all these uh, celebrations and, and he's at. And, and truly, it's illegal. it's illegal because they should not be making their choice based on your social or personal life. They should be making the choice on your professional life and that you're the most qualified for the job. But we know that's not true today in, in the 21st no. country and woke, you know, we're, we're in. So be aware of it. You can't ignore it. I'm ignoring it. It's not, it's just, you're not going to get the interview. <laughs> that's yeah. the bottom line. Well, that's what I'm saying. And, and there are some people who are very sensitive about jokes, about this, about that, you know, they are. And uh, so uh, you don't have to eliminate your complete <laughs> Facebook or Twitter uh, uh, site, but certainly review it, uh, go through and see if there are jokes, if there are, uh, comments you've made, uh, you know, anything that can be construed as uh, a, as a negative to the person or a red flag uh, for that person. So, uh, yeah, it's very important. Uh, our social media now is is out there for, for you know, virtually anyone uh, can look at. Uh, so, and, 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 and this also, goes to, this goes to banking and our suggestion that you have a personal bank. And a business bank account at a separate bank. And as I said at the outset, you know, if you're going to have a Facebook page, keep, have one that's personal and have one that's professional. And then, you know, you you can keep the professional one spe to be specific as to your professional experience, interests, and uh, the er the field that you, you work in. And, of course, that would be the face page that you give them. And uh, Twitter, you know, that's your own handle, buddy. <laughs> Anybody that's on Twitter... I don't know. I, I, yeah, that, that's, that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. So, um, yeah, but keep in mind that every, everywhere information about you is available. I mean, they can do, I, I can do a search on your, uh, I don't care if your name is John Smith. Uh, you gave me your address, your phone number, your email address and all of that. I can find you. And uh, I can uh, and see if there's anything negative about you out there. Uh, I can certainly look it up pretty quickly. So uh, social media, extremely important that you uh, review your social media site. Make sure there's nothing on there that's going to uh, be a red flag for anybody. And um, hopefully that will uh, that will help you get the uh, uh, will uh, move your resume up in the stack. Of the other right. of the other folks that don't do that so yeah all right as she mentioned earlier a lot of companies even mom and pop stores now are uh, they're uh, they're using um uh, software to uh uh field applicants and generally these are 
the questions on here are going to be knockout questions. They're questions that are designed to knock you out of the resume process. Um, so uh, that's why writing the resume in advance with the proper work experience uh, definitions, uh, the proper skill definitions, uh, education, your extracurriculars, leadership, all of those things need to mirror your application uh, or your online application and your resume should coincide with each other. There shouldn't be any, oh, wait a minute, the resume says this thing, but on the online it says this. So make sure that everything is a positive, everything is how your skills and expertise can help that company. That's right. And, and if you find yourself in, in a situation where you're doing this, as Tom is saying, and there is a questionnaire, first rule of a questionnaire, read all the questions first. Don't go through the questions and answer them and get to the end. Read all the questions first. You'll, it's, it's a fascinating thing, but you'll find two or three questions lead up to the, really the question. So, yeah. it, you know, if it's a 10, 20, 30 question questionnaire, read them all, think about them. And then answer them backwards. Don't start at the top. Answer them backwards. So because if, if you answer them backwards, it, you all of a sudden will start thinking in terms, why did they ask this question? Why did mm -hmm. they ask this series of questions? So it's very important that you understand that there's a methodology to the questions they ask. And there's mm -hmm. a reason, the order that they put it in to ask you. So you, you want to uh, be able to create the best perspective perspective of yourself um, by, again, reading all the questions first and answering them backwards. <laughs> yeah. Well, in some cases that works because in some cases they put all the questions on one page and you just scroll down the page right. and answer the questions. Other ones, uh, they'll ask you a question and then it's next <laughs> and you can't go to that, next till you answer the, that, the question. So yeah. that, that's what makes it really, uh, you know, as, as Shane says, don't rush through this. Um, uh, uh, if you get one of those that has the next button, uh, really read that, read that question carefully. What are they really asking you? <laughs> and what, what are the, what are the possible negative answers <laughs> to that question? <laughs> I, uh, and, 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 uh yeah. th remember folks uh, they can put a dot, you know, where you fill the dot and if you don't, you don't move forward. So that's a difficult thing. Um, very often uh, at the end, uh, you will find they'll have a comment section. And that's where I would, you know, I would sometimes put in not applicable number one, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. I would say, mm -hmm. you know, not, I, you know, yes, I answered all the questions, but I felt that mm -hmm. and because you should tell you should push back on them. And uh, th that may get you the interview, by the way. Well, it may or it may kick you out too. <laughs> Makes you yeah, argumentative. But then you, find out, but then you find out about something about the company that maybe you don't want a job there too. So, well, that could it works be. That could, yeah, that could be. Uh, that could be true as well. So, so yeah, the uh, the main thing that we're looking for here that we're trying to help you with as we go along through this, and the employer as well, as to some of the things to look for, and um, you know what to. What to expect in um, most of the most of the applications you're going to get, most of the resumes you're going to get, are going to be laid out because they went and they went online and they found here how to write the perfect resume, and it's all listed there and they fill in the blanks and you know it just doesn't work that way. I mean, you've really got to yes, you've really got to look at yourself, and that's the hardest part for a lot of people to do. Shane, they just can't look at themselves positively and i don't know why that is you know that they feel oh well gee i you know uh, yeah i was pretty good at that i guess <laughs> no you weren't you were great at it <laughs> you were super great at it so exactly. so make sure yeah i mean geez well as i said uh, we want to make sure that uh you know, if there are things that we've left out or if you have questions, uh, put them in the comments below. Uh, we would certainly appreciate that. We'll be happy to answer any questions uh, on this. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, for business owners, uh, we did a podcast on things you can't ask in a job interview. And I'll put the description 
uh, or the uh, link to that uh, podcast in the description below. And uh, we will uh, we will uh, continue to try to help uh, people get jobs and uh, for employers to hire great people and uh, cut turnover because, hey, it costs six times more to keep a customer than it does to uh, get a new one. And uh, employees, the newer the employees, the more mistakes, the co more costly they are. Uh, so uh, once you find a good employee, uh, don't skimp on the training and uh, get them up to speed as quickly as possible. And uh, you will have a great uh, group of folks and a great business. All right. Entirely. Entirely. That's <laughs> how you get the interview. That's exactly right. So. All right. Uh, well, we want to thank you for uh, being here. Hey, if you're watching us on YouTube, by all means, subscribe, like us, ring that notification bell and uh, let, let us know what you're thinking out there. And also we're on Patreon. Um, if you'd like to support the show, um, well, there's a link to that description in the uh, in the uh, uh, description below. And also, uh, if you'd like to make podcasts like this, um, we use. Uh, StreamYard, and it's a great program, and I'll put a link to their uh, website down in the description below. And if you'd like to uh, do all the whistles and bells and things that we show you how to do here, uh, that's a great place uh, to go. So, and of course, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday, and uh, you can find all about uh, all, everything you need to know about us at TomAndShane.com or at KMMSAM.com. Click on Tom and Shane's podcast. So. That's going to wrap it up for us, I guess. Uh, say goodbye, Shane. I will indeed. Be happy, be safe, everyone. Uh, live in the moment. Uh, it, life is a lot of moments, so each one is, is special and should be cherished. And live to work. That's what this is all about, owning your own business, getting up every day, being excited because you work for yourself and not the man. But come home happy to your family. I always come home with a smile on your face. That's what they want to see when you come through the front door. Have a good day. All right. Thanks for watching and listening. Hey, if you think it there, we'll say it here and all views are welcome here. And we'll see everybody on our next podcast, Thursday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. See you then.